today is February 20th, 2020, and welcome to HTV News. I'm Melissa Scotty. And I'm Lucas Hanrahan. Here's what's going on at HHS. Juniors, use the link posted in your grade level canvas to choose your top two candidates for the Princess of the Student Body Homecoming Court. This form will be open until Thursday, February 20th at 3 p.m. And don't forget to bring in your peanut butter and jelly to your sixth hour class. To qualify, the winning class must have at least 25 jars total. Mixing and matching is totally appropriate. The Spread the Love campaign will run until Wednesday, February 26th. Google is sponsoring a contest of students draw or doodle using the quote, I show kindness by. The contest runs from January 6th through March 13th. 51 students will be selected from Indiana. Wonderful scholarships are available. When there's a bump in the road, grief support group will meet tomorrow, February 19th at 2.45 in the guidance department. Please let guidance know if you have any questions. This week is our school spirit week. The themes for this year's spirit week are Tuesday being Jer Jersey Day, Wednesday being Twin Day, today on Thursday the 20th is Color War with seniors wearing gray, juniors wearing red, sophomores wearing blue, and freshmen wearing green, and tomorrow on Friday the 21st is Purple and Gold Day, followed by the prep rally. There's also a dance scheduled from 8.30 to 10.30 right after the basketball game versus Highland. There's also events that you can sign up for, such as the TikTok Challenge, Student vs. Staff Basketball Game, and Dodgeball during the pep rally. More details can be found in your grade level canvas. And now we tune in with Jaden and Olivia for sports. On Saturday, 224 wrestlers represented 59 schools descending upon East Chicago High School and John Barreto Center for IHSAA Wrestling Semi-State Competition. All 11 brickies were in attendance would be put to the test the best around to see who was left standing with their hand raised. Each weight class had 60 competitors. The top four individuals in each class advanced to the state finals next week, weekend at the Baker's Life Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. In order to secure a spot in the top four, a wrestler needs to win two matches. Here we go. The first round was magnificent for the Brickies as 10 of our 11s were victorious. Of the 10, eight wins were by pin. The ticket round was crazy. The Brickies wrestled with everything they had and represented the blue collar town on the lake with pride. Overall, Hopin scored 56 points as a team and finished six overall. Two of our boys were able to earn a second round victory in advance. Here are some of their stories. At 106 pounds, freshman Trevor Triana, after winning a 2.0 decision to end the first round, won a sudden victory after he and his op opponent were three periods and two OTs nodded at 0-0. Trevor was able to ride out the 30 seconds sudden victory time to secure his spot in the state finals. Trevor lost a tough one in the semifinals, but considering he began the year on injury reserve with a broken hair, an appearance in the state finals and a shot at bringing home a medal was amazing. At 152 pounds, junior Tyler Turley, after winning by a fall in the first round, won a 13-10 decision to punch his ticket to Indianapolis. Tyler got up early, then had to fight off a furious charge from his opponent to earn the win. With his, with his state finals Benit already secured, they won a thriller in the semifinals over a previous semi-state champion, getting a turn and ride out in the third period to win. 2-0 to advance to the championship round in the finals. Tyler lost a hard fought, Tyler lost a hard fought match to undefeated senior Garrett Struckman with Wild we'll see, but what a finish to set him up for the next week. Next weekend, the Brickies are bringing TNT two times, Trevor Triana and Tyler Turley to Indianapolis for state finals. Triana joins his older brother Tyler in the state, state qualifier both club as both he and Turley make first appearance at the Baker's Life Fieldhouse. Tuesday night, Hobart hosted area top 10 team Hanover Central who entered the game with a 17-1 record on the year. On paper, the Wildcats were the favorite, but that's why we were playing the game, folks. The Brickies were well prepared and played some sifting defense, holding Hanover at 13 first quarter points with below their season average. Hobart kept pace on the first offensive and as well as trailed by only three after the first frame. The second period was more of the same as each battled for every loose ball, rebounded and name it. These kids were going after it. Down to 25 to 21 and a half, the Brickies came out, and came out of the locker room fired up and, and continued to work, work, work. Collectively to up and the favored Wildcats after three quarters, the score was Hanover 38, Hobart 30. Hanover 38, Hobart 32. After 24 minutes, it was everyone's game. Unfortunately, the visitors were finally able to get some breathing room with about three minutes remaining at Hanover's hit free throws down the stretch to ice it, winning a tough one over our boys, 51-38. The Brickies gave a tremendous effort and even thought we came up a bit short. Bricky Pride was on full display as Hobart stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the area's best. 
seeing Caleb Banjoff score 16 points to lead the offensive attack. Classmate Tyler Schultz and sophomore Anthony Williams each added 7 in the loss. On Friday night, our boys headed over to 5959 Broadway to face NCC rival and defending Class 2A state champion Andrean. In a competitive first quarter, Andrean held the ball for the last shot and scored the buzzer to take a 15-10 lead. The second frame offered more of the same with Hobart attacking 59 or full court pressure and defending ag against what seemed like an endless amount of pick and roll. Andrea ended the half on 5-0 run and led a 35-20 at the break. The breaky started at the third exactly how Coach Brown drew it, with the stop and a score three-pointer by Banjoff cut the lead to 12. That was a, as close as Hobart would get to the rest as the way as Andrea answered with the three of their own and never looked back. K senior Caleb Bandroff, sophomore Anthony Williams, paced Brickies with the 13th place in a 71-40 defeat. Saturday night, the Brickies were again road warriors as they visited our neighbor to the North River Forest. Fortunately, the Ingots provided the perfect medicine to cure Hobart's three-game skid, and our boys shine, boys shine at both ends of the floor. When the Brickies headed south of the Ridge Road towards home, the Nets were still burning in Bill Logan Gymnasium as Hobart touched the Ingots 69-28. Wow, look down defense, combined with some Timely execution on the offensive end led to Hobart securing their eighth victory of the year. Benjoff was against them, the man as he lit up River for 22 points. Classmate Tyler Schultz poured in 15 more as our boys defeated the Ingots for the 16th time in their last 18 tries. This will be another busy week for the Bricky Kygers with games Tuesday and Friday and Saturday. Currently 8-9 on the year, Hobart has five games remaining before March Madness begins. That's all we have for you today. Now back to you, Alyssa. Thanks, Jaden and Olivia. Now over to our very own HTV On The Go team to take a look at our Slam Poetry Club. Now over to HTV On The Go. Hi, my name is Liz Toscani with HTV News and welcome to HTV On The Go. Poetry? Do you like constructive feedback? Do you like making lasting friendships? Well then, Slam Poetry Club is for you. This week on HTV On The Go, I went to room 2309 to see what Slam Poetry is all about. Slam Poetry Club is a club that actually started right when I first worked at the high school, uh, so it's about four years old. Um, we come together every week where students share the poetry that they've already written outside of class. Um, it can be about anything they want, um, something that they're feeling about, you know, a peer or something that they're struggling with or some kind of bigger society issue that they want to address. Uh, they deliver their poetry to us. We workshop it in terms of how to deliver it more effectively, anything that needs rewriting to be able to make it a poem that has more impact. There aren't any requirements in terms of GPA and things like that currently. Anybody who wants to learn how to write better poems, especially slam poems in particular, are welcome to attend even if they don't have background in it. I think poetry is important because we as human beings are emotional creatures. We have a lot of feelings. We have a lot of things that we're passionate about that we want to be able to address. And what slam brings to the table and what poetry brings to the table in general is a way to take emotion and turn it into art. If you think slam poetry is the place for you, they meet every Tuesday from right after school till 3.30. They would love to have you. My name is Liz Toscani with HTV News. I'll see you next week on HTV On The Go. Back to you in the studio. And now we tune in with Cameron Monica for what's going on all around the region. Hello, I'm Cameron Monica, and here's the things to look forward to in the coming weeks. Microsoft has continuously teased the new design for the Xbox, which more or less emphasizes on the name itself. This interesting yet cautioning build for the console calls itself the Series X and features a very box-like figure that resembles a computer. For those like myself, a bit set back by the design don't need to be too worried though. With the new age of technology and gaming capabilities on the rise, Series X will run at double the power of the console before it and withstand 8K streaming resolutions. Will this new console finally be the deciding factor of the current war with PlayStation? Only time will tell. With many current events taking place, it's nearly impossible to forget about what lies beyond. Chicago will be allowing for a new insight to this during its Imagine the Moon Sky Show, taking place at the Adler Planetarium. 
Dive into the stars and explore your inner astrologist as you spend your afternoon experiencing a lunar eclipse and taking a deeper look outside the Earth's atmosphere. Admission prices are $24.95 for adults and $19.95 for kids. It'll be quite a spectacular event if you ask me. For those who haven't visited yet, the record bin is opened up in downtown Hobart for all individuals craving old style music. Records are on sale and are available for previewing on site. The owner himself has a love for multiple genres and has pictures placed all over the walls with some of the most beloved rock stars. From my personal experience, I'd highly recommend it to anyone in the area looking for something to do. That's all for now. Now back to Lucas and Alyssa. Thanks, Cameron. Key Club wants to congratulate its 2020 and 2021 officers. They are President Elijah Puente, Vice President Emma Ramirez, Secretary Gianna Rodriguez, Treasurer Sarah Joswiak, Webmaster and Bulletin Editor Jaden Pfeiffer. These students will be trained this year to so kick off an amazing year in August. Congrats again. An important safety tip. Please use the sidewalks on the north side of 10th Street. This means you should safely cross 10th to get to the sidewalk. Community members are concerned and want to keep you safe, as do we. When you must be on the non-sidewalk side of the 10th, be sure to use the bike lane and watch for traffic. That concludes this edition of HTV News. Make sure to like and subscribe to the Hober High School Radio and TV channel. And remember, remember only, only the, the best, best for HHS, HHS and have, have a, a fantastic day, day everyone. everyone.